Welcome back. Um, if I have granola in my teeth, well, it's because I was eating granola, so I apologize for that. Uh, but we are back on the Squadcast, and we're going to be talking um, some MK news as well as Sackboy, a big adventure, Brock's favorite, obviously, because he's so wholesome. Um, and then we're going to be- I can't take you seriously with that granola in your teeth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not news, everybody. Let's just get to the MK stuff. Caboose, take it away. <laughs> All right, so in something that's a little different and not usually a topic we'd bring to the Squadcast, but still within the realm of gaming, there is a Mortal Kombat movie on the way uh, coming out April 16th. Of course, it is a WB film, and so with that, you Americans can enjoy it on HBO Max day and date, whereas <laughs> we're going to have to... You said that was such hate. <laughs> We're here like, in Canada. Oh, we're we're going to have to figure out what we're going to have to do about that. Um, but either way, there's a Mortal Kombat movie coming up. And a lot of people up until this was revealed were a little worried about what the hell was going on and when we were potentially going to see something because, well, like it's three months away and there's no trailer and not even like a first look until now. Um, there was an Entertainment Weekly article that came out that released a bunch of photos that give us a really good look at some of the characters in the film and as well provide a ton of details about the story of the film. Since then, there's also been an official synopsis. I think I'll read that out first and then go over some additional details that we got from the Entertainment Weekly article. So here's the official synopsis for the Mortal Kombat movie. MMA fighter Cole Young, accustomed to taking a beating for money, is unaware of his heritage or why Outworld's Emperor Shang Tsung has sent his best warrior Sub-Zero an otherworldly cryomancer to hunt down Cole. Featuring or fearing for his family's safety, Cole goes in search of Sonya Blade at the direction of Jax, a special forces major who bears the same strange dragon mark dragon marking that Cole was born with. Soon he finds himself at the temple of Lord Raiden, an elder god, and the protector of Earthrealm, who grants sanctuary to those who bear the mark. Here, Cole trains with experienced warriors Liu Kang, Kung Lao, and rogue mercenary Kano as he prepares to stand with Earth's greatest champions against the enemies of Outworld in a high-stakes battle for the universe. But will Cole be pushed hard enough to unlock his arcana, the immense power from within his soul, in time to save not only his family, but to stop Outworld once and for all? So, it's a little different from the game in a lot of ways in the main way being that the main and or protagonist of the film is a brand new character never before introduced to the mortal Kombat lore and his character sounds exactly like what they should have just did with johnny cage mm -hmm. where it's a down on his luck mma fighter or in johnny cage's case a down on his luck actor who's also no! like, a Who martial that? artist. They shouldn't have done that with Johnny Cage. They, That's they, this character Johnny... should have been Johnny. No, like should have been Johnny Cage instead of the MMA fighter. Or you think yes. they should have put that yeah. MMA like down on his luck into Johnny. No, 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 no. The, it should have like the story is so very similar and mirrors ah, okay. that of Johnny Cage yeah. that it should have just been Johnny, Johnny Cage, Cage yeah. instead. Um, That's my biggest worry about the film. But, the Entertainment Weekly article also goes into a lot of stuff, including the fact that the first 10 minutes of the film includes a fight between Scorpion and Sub-Zero uh, and kind of the origins of that. If anyone knows the Mortal Kombat lore, before Scorpion becomes Scorpion, he is um, he's killed by Sub-Zero yeah. and then kind of brought back to life as this, this nightmare demon uh, fighter. Uh, and so it looks like the film is doing a little bit of that. Uh, I'm not sure if we've if we uh, did we run the B-roll already. If we did, I'm assuming that you guys got a first look there at Sub Zero, uh, Jax. You also see Scorpion. what that Cole Young character looks like. Actually, not Scorpion just yet, but you see a little bit of that first battle, the opening yeah. battle between Sub Zero so, and Scorpion. Well, I think we do see Scorpion because it's Hiroyuki Sonata is playing yes. Scorpion, yes. and he's awesome. If you guys West, watch Westworld, incredible. He yeah. is just, and he's like in everything. Cool. The Wolverine. Right. Yeah. Oh, true. He, yeah, yeah. He's amazing. So um, good. So I'm looking forward to the movie because of him. Mm -hmm. um, with these images, though, like I feel like you're really excited about these images, Caboose. Uh, yeah, because everything in terms of the aesthetic of the film and the costume designs and all that, when it comes to the Mortal Kombat characters, 
they're nailing it. Like mm-hmm. Sub Zero, even though it's like a real, it's an extreme close up, and he's like creating an ice sword. It looks like his MKX design. It looks super faithful yeah. to like what, like you can immediately recognize, even as a non hardcore Mortal Kombat fan. Oh, that's Sub Zero, and yeah. that right. I am so down for. I love that. And as well, just everything I read from the Entertainment Weekly article in regards to what they're doing with Scorpion and Sub-Zero sounds like they are getting it right. Um, It's just, again, like the core of the problem here for me is just the fact that this film is going to center around a brand new character that should have been Johnny Cage first. And second, that I don't know if I'm that interested in. You have a world where there's someone like Liu Kang, Kung Lao, these incredible Shaolin monks who've mastered these, uh, these sort of like special abilities, you know, like one guy's got the sharp hat and the magic. The other guy's controlling fire. He's got part dragon inside of him. You know, you got cryomancer like sub zero or scorpion and, and you decide to focus on an MMA fighter, you know? It's just sure. like it's so lame to me that that that's like what they wanted to land on. It feels uh, it, I don't know that maybe this is the wrong word to use, but and tell me if it is. But it feels like Americanized, if that yes. makes sense. Well, you and know? that's what I was going to say about the costumes. Like one thing that made the for me, um, the original Mortal Kombat movie so great is the costumes were elaborate. Like it was no matter how cheesy it was, they tried to stay really faithful to the game. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I feel like that these costumes are giving me the feels of like X Men movies, where some of the costumes hmm. of the characters, like Sub Zero, are very colorful. So in the X Men, you have very colorful costumes, and they downplay that to a black and gray scheme mm-hmm. to modernize well, it. So we'll even see what the full look at, looks like. Yeah, like so this it's hard for Sub Zero because you only see you know his helmet. I yeah. could see like his mask is like that, that like rustic, uh, like a yeah. kind of metal, metal right? Yeah. And that's why, like, I kind of want it to be more blue. I want it to be bright. I want mm. it to be more theatrical because yeah. this is like the the nether realm. This is supposed to be elaborate. I don't want it to be modernized. I don't want it to look like something someone will wear down the street or you know how we think every other you know superhero movie should have been in the 90s everyone was trying to downplay it to look modern and cool right more realistic um and and i don't want that look so that's a bit of my concern with this um as but i am hopeful although i don't like the character choice of like following this new character who's an mma fighter i'm hopeful that they're committed to good fight scenes because you have an mma fighter um if all else fails for this movie, if the story doesn't really land, if there's some good fights, if there's some some cool fatalities, some some you know the Mortal Kombat flavor, and they land Scorpion and Sub Zero or like Liu Kang and Kung Lao, then okay, like I'll give it a pass. But mm-hmm. for me, like this movie should have been about Liu Kang; that he should have been the protagonist of the film in Mortal Kombat from beginning to end. More mm-hmm. like Liu Kang is the protagonist, Shang Tsung is the a- antagonist, and like that's how it's always been. That's how it always should be. I'm yeah. a fan, and I'm always of the idea that, especially in film, filmmakers should have the creative freedom to kind of do what they want to, change some things up, take some liberties, just like take something from your mind and put it out there. Um, but at the same time, be uh, be faithful to the source material, and I just would have preferred. To have that level of creativity, but still within sort of what makes Mortal Kombat Mortal Kombat, you know? Sure. I don't know. Yeah, you brought up a a great point, I think, and you called it Americanized. The way I see it and it kind of plays off to me is that they're playing it really safe. Uh, We've seen this. We've seen this kind of trope with like in films that are adapting something and they introduce a character that's new and acts as like a conduit to the viewer, someone who's the fish out of water, right? We're coming yeah. into this franchise not knowing what to expect as the general audience, not like the hardcore people who are invested like you or Camille. Mm. But for Cole, this Cole character, he's acting like the conduit to people who are just like, okay, well, I guess I'll go see Mortal Kombat. I don't know anything about this universe. I don't know about anything about these characters. So mm-hmm. that way he goes in and then, you know, you get that exposition of okay, here's Sub Zero. This is why this character exists. This is, and you get that like 
And it's a safe way of creating a universe, right? It, that It's just weird for me because I think you get that same effect if the character's Johnny Cage. Because yeah. that is the same story for Johnny. He's an actor who, sure. like, yeah, he's, like, a martial artist and stuff like that. But he's this down-on-his-luck actor who gets involved in the tournament, has no idea what's going on. And you get that same level of exposition through the lens of his character. Yeah, And I feel like they could have just done the same there. And... Johnny is a character as well. Like I think Louis Tan is a great actor. I also think just in general across the board, they've got some fantastic actors to play these characters. Hiroyuki Sonata is literally perfect. Oh, he's so good, yeah. Like perfect. Um, and I, I think it's Joe Taslam, who I believe is from the Raid films, um, mm -hmm. playing Sub Zero, which is also just like, oh my god! Like they couldn't have picked anyone better. They got um. Ludi Lin as Liu Kang, which is awesome. He looks so great in costume, like in character. Um, and the actor from from Supergirl, I can't remember his name, but he's playing Jax. And I mean, with the Jax arms and everything, he looks so legit. Yeah, I'm Jax actually looks very legit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's cool. working for me there. And I think Louis Tan could have could have easily pulled off Johnny Cage. You know, I think he has kind of the charm and the charisma to pull off a character like that. Um, but again, it's just that, um, like they made him an MMA fighter because I feel like that's such a, uh, that's such a recognizable thing now, you sure. know, it's such a, it's such a thing that like a lot of people do is watch that stuff nowadays. So it's just, it's an easier draw maybe for people. Yeah. And yeah, you're right. They are playing it very safe. Yeah. And I think what worked really well for like Brock, I know you're a little quiet. Were you a fan of the first movie? No, I have, I have no bone to pick with Mortal Kombat at all. Um, the, the only thing I have to say is Ko okay. Young is the cheesiest name. Like, <laughs> yeah, that seriously. Was name. <laughs> it's so lame. That's, that's, that's all I need to know about the film that I never want to watch it. No, you're not even going to give it a try. Ko Young, get out of here. Um. Oh, not get over here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, um, <laughs> can't even follow up after that. You. <laughs> I tried to like replay the new Mortal Kombat a few weeks ago, and like the storyline was just so ridiculous. Uh, I I had no idea what was going on. Okay, let's talk about storyline <laughs> because I think the reason why the first movie worked so well, if you you weren't familiar with Mortal Kombat, you just saw it because Mortal Kombat was huge when the movies came out. You yeah. just knew of a video game that like was making a rating system for video games because it was so gruesome. You identified yeah. with Scorpion and you were identified with the blue guy that looked like him, Sub-Zero. Yeah. If you knew nothing else about Mortal Kombat, the plot was very, like, it's just very simple. It's very faithful to what the game was about. You have to fight for your realm, right? Yep. You, you just, you get a representative and you fight. There's a tournament um, and people fight. Exactly. The end. Um, <laughs> and I don't think there's a problem with keeping it that simple. Mm-hmm. Um, I even, absolutely agree. Yeah. And, and you, like, even if the plot's so simple, you diversify this with, like, a whole bunch of different types of characters, which you have in Mortal Kombat, right? You have your serious, brooding characters, and you have the humor, the relief of humor through Johnny Cage. Mm -hmm. um, so the fact that, you know, we're not getting that, it, it's going to be interesting. I don't know if this is a way for maybe NetherRealm to try to branch away from some of the core characters um, that they have introduced new characters. Uh, what do you, what's your take on that caboose? Well, what worries me as well about them not introducing Johnny in any way in this film, although maybe they, maybe they do, maybe it's something that they're hiding. Maybe it'll be like a post credit scene or something. Mm -hmm. um, and especially, I think what's weird is that Johnny as a character has like really gotten the push through Mortal Kombat games in the last like five years. Um, but anyways, like what I'm trying to say here is I guess, if they're not going to introduce him now, when this is supposed to be the beginning, I don't know where there's like a plot or a storyline that you could introduce him in later. You know Especially what I mean? Because you have Sonya already. Like, yeah. Like they, they, I don't know. They, there's, there's a couple of missed opportunities here. I would love for this to, for this movie to work. I want it to be good. I want it to be great. I want a bunch of people to see it. I want HBO Max to be like, you guys really are on to something here. Let's make more of these because there is so much potential. They can make a movie just about Scorpion and Sub-Zero. They can make a movie just about Liu Kang and Kung Lao, the Shaolin monks doing their thing. You know, there's a lot of potential here and there's so many characters. It's such an expanded universe, the Mortal Kombat universe, that they could do quite a bit. 
Um, so I'm really hoping, I'm rooting for this film. I want it to succeed. I want it to be good for that reason because I want to see more from it in live action. But it's just some of the things that I'm reading here, some of the things that I'm seeing are worrisome. But again, if all else fails, if there's some good fighting, if there's some good action, some choreography, that's just, I don't know. If they land that, then it's at least it's watchable. At least it's a good time. And hopefully they'll make more. Now, I'm assuming you would know, but do, have they said, like, if they're working with any, like, renowned uh, choreographers in terms of the, their fight sequences? Uh, I don't know. I'd love to look into that. I haven't yeah. uh, I haven't heard anything like that specifically, but um, I'd imagine if you're going to make a movie that is yeah. so, like, the entire foundation of Mortal Kombat is the fights. You would uh, hope. And I mean, like, for me, like, a casual Mortal Kombat fan... That's the make or break thing. Is yeah. How do these fight sequences pan out? Are yeah. they going to be believable? Are they going to be hard hitting? And mm -hmm. how does that all shake out on film? But mm -hmm. I think as well, like getting uh, getting an actor like Joe Taslam from The Raid, right. who's uh, who, who's such a talented like martial artist. He's very like, you know, he's honed in on that. Uh, Louis Tan, who loves to do his own stunts, who is a, is a big fan of, of like being just a hard worker in general when it comes to the martial arts side of or just the choreography and the action for some of the films that he's involved in that stuff like gives me hope that 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 is what they plan to do mm -hmm. yeah. is to is to make it some uh give us some good action now they did say as well that um they're going to have some fatalities that are going to yep. be really brutal and hopefully rated really R. painful uh to mm -hmm. the game yeah it's going to be rated r now when i think of the first movie there were those game Easter eggs that worked really well. That's very outside of film. So you heard the voice like flawless victory. Mm -hmm. um, you, you do we want to see that again? Come yes. back. Those yes. elements of being other than just this film. I don't care if even it doesn't make sense. I don't care if yes. like just yeah. an announcer as two people are about to fight who you don't see where he's just, he just a voice comes on. It's like round one. Fight. Like, I just, I give me that, you know, like I'm down. Now, Ed Boon is, Ed Boon was heavily tied to this project. Is that right? Or uh, I think I remember hearing at one point that he did visit the set and, and mm -hmm. in some way he's, I'm sure I'd imagine he was consulted about this. Him and probably even uh, John Tobias mm -hmm. um, just to, just to like have them involved in some way, you know, to get, a bit of approval, mm -hmm. but I don't know if like he was there every step of the way or anything. Well, and I feel like <sighs> Netherrealm's very protective um, about Mortal Kombat just because like that is their bread and butter, mm -hmm. and they are so closely tied to their community. Like they know exactly what their community likes, what their community would want to see. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping Ed Boon just didn't do a you know a visit to the set. I hope that. He was actually, or you know, someone from the NetherRealm team was actually there as a consultant, really getting that core understanding of what fans want to see. Because let's face it, Mortal Kombat fans are very cheesy because Mortal Kombat is very cheesy, right? right. Um, and, and that's what makes it so good. Um, and again, these are my hesitations with what I've seen from the costumes trying to modernize the look of Mortal Kombat, and that never does well. So I'm just hoping they really did their homework here. Yeah. Um, my fingers are crossed. I want it to be good, but we'll see. April 16th was when we'll get the answer. And I'm, I'm assuming a trailer is like imminent. Like within there, the there must week. be a trailer soon. Like within well, the they, next week. They just, uh, Warner brothers just released that like short teaser snippet. Yeah. The, like, the is it real? Of, yeah. yeah. I feel like everything is going to start coming out. Like, uh, Godzilla versus Kong and Mortal Godzilla Kombat. got pushed up. So yeah, yeah. which that's is gonna weird. that should get a trailer like now <laughs> immediately. <laughs> yeah. So Brock, for you, like, what do you think? Because this is obviously coming on HBO Max. Um, it's limiting the audience there. They haven't really talked about what other options there are for people to view things like the Mortal Kombat movie. Do you think like they have a plan for what they're gonna do? What do you think they're gonna do for people that are in different parts of the world? I think people in different parts of the world will figure out a way to watch it like they always have. Um, I, I, I think quarantine is still popular um, with kids and everyone, so there'll be no problems getting a hold of that footage. 
<laughs> All right. Okay. So what did they do? Away. What did they do with Wonder Woman for for Canada? Was it like you could it rent it on Amazon, Amazon and, stuff? And, and iTunes? I think. Yes. Yeah, so oh, okay. But it was. I got like, it through Amazon. Yeah, okay. it was. It was pretty pricey. Um, it was like thirty bucks. Yeah, it was thirty bucks. Like yeah, thirty. Um, and then you still had to it watch God during King Kong Kiss. <laughs> right, right. I want. Oh my they're god! They're gonna find out. They're they're gonna find out their mom's name is uh, Martha. Martha. Yeah, what did you say? Martha? That name. What did you say? What did it's you actually say? Mothra? <laughs> Mothra. Mothra. 